Birds are falling from the sky. Now before your eyes get too wide, let me explain. You're probably all wondering how you can trust this random guy on stage spouting this alarming statement. To start, I've been an avid bird watcher for years and my passion first started from the incidental joining of a science competition where I competed in the subject of ornithology, the study of birds, all by myself. It was here that while everyone else had someone to help them, I had to do it all alone. And it came as a surprise to me when I got fourth place that year, then second the next. This then snowballed my passion for ornithology and it's led me here, to you. Now when people think of birds, it's not the most favorable image. From attacking you when you unknowingly go near their nests or leaving white stains on your car, Birds can be quite the nuisance. And it's because of this that people fail to recognize their importance. In reality, birds are what's called an indicator species. These species provide quick and easy insights into the conditions and health of a certain ecosystem. Birds are extra special because they provide these insights into multiple ecosystems, not just one. However, despite this importance, birds are still dying out due to climate change and human-caused problems. All over the world, as the Environmental Protection Agency states, birds are dying out, like pelicans and bald eagles, due to eggshell thinning caused by insecticide poisoning. On top of this, Poultry Sense states that birds are more susceptible to heart attacks and respiratory illnesses, and this is directly related to their unique respiratory system, which allows them to breathe in more CO2 on average because they breathe in more air on average. Also, Right before the COVID pandemic shut the world down, there was a massive culling of birds spotted from the west coast of America to the top of South America. As The Guardian reports, no one's exactly sure as to why this happened, but traditionally, it's occurred during or directly after natural disasters. Historically, NASA states that there's an increase in natural disaster severity and spawning that is directly correlated with the severity of climate change. This means that there's a link between natural disasters and bird die-offs. And believe it or not, this has a tangible effect on our lives. Birds can eat pests like bugs or mice and therefore are sort of a natural pesticide. Saving companies money from buying actual synthetic pesticides. In turn, saving consumers from price hikes in their products. Additionally, birds can eat mosquitoes, which carry pesky diseases reducing their overall population and decreasing the illnesses spread by them. Overall, this is saddening from a bird lover's point of view. From the weirdest to the coolest, all birds, no matter how unique, deserve a place in nature. And it's sad to see the species fall over time, literally. This is why we should work to protect them from the disasters we are creating. As I mentioned before, natural disasters cause an increase in climate change, or the other way around, sorry. This means that when birds try to flee exhausted from a day of foraging, they have three options. Flee exhausted from a day of foraging, become injured from debris, or stay and run the risk of getting swept up by the storm. They often run into the dilemma of running, or staying and risking death or flying until they no longer can. This causes them to collapse mid-air, torpedo to the ground, and die. Now, it doesn't have to be this way. We can do something about it. There are three main ways this can be done. First, we can use our voices. We can speak on environmental topics. All over the world, only a fraction of the conversation is focused on the environment, from topics, from topics and policies ranging from revegetation of our native lands to the increased protections of these endangered species, this is good, but not enough. In reality, the profits of businesses and corporations have more of a say than the cries of these animals. This is not right. We should protect them. Reaching out to your local representative or senator is a good place to start. Joining in on protests and marches that are environmentally focused is another way to get you, your friends, and your family all involved. Your voice matters. Second, as consumers, we can choose environmentally sustainable products, especially those without palm oil in them. For those of you who are unaware, 
Palm oil essentially is an oil that's only farmed in hot and humid places like rainforests. This oil is then put into almost every single product anyone here owns, especially for makeup. The danger with this is that farmers end up cutting and burning miles and miles of trees in the rainforest to make spaces for their farms, degrading the soil through their unsustainable farming methods, creating runoff, and polluting our waterways. Finally, you've heard it here a thousand times before. Try to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Ultimately, you can't control what businesses and other people do about climate change. So try to be your own advocate for the environment. Only you can make a difference. The higher CO2 emissions soar, the faster birds fall. For the sake of the earth and the birds, do your part. Thank you.